Good morning students. Our next topic is pollen grain. It is the male gametophyte in angiospermic plants. Male gametophyte gives rise to male gametes. If we touch the opened anthers of any flower, we find a deposition of yellow powder on our fingers that is of pollen grains. When we sprinkle this powder on a glass slide and observe under microscope, we will get really amazed by the variety of architecture that is size, shape, color, design of the different pollen grains from the different species of the plants. Let us try to locate how the pollen can be obtained from a flower. A flower consists of anther and filament. In the cross section of anther we can find four microsporangia that is pollen sac. In each pollen sac we may find a pollen grain that is microspore mother cell which is deployed in a structure. It undergoes meiosis and gradually forms four microspores. The four microspores gradually grows and they are haploid in nature. Each microspore is a potential pollen which undergoes mitosis and two haploid nucleus are formed. Students keep in mind that a microspore undergoes division of nucleus only no cell division or no cell wall formation takes place. These two nuclei are generated which is known as a generative nucleus and a vegetative nucleus. After which slowly and gradually they will form cell wall and two cells are formed. One is vegetative cell and another is generative cell. So this is a pollen formed inside the anther which is released during the dehiscence of the anther. If we see the cross section of the pollen, we can observe a prominent two layered wall of the pollen, the hard outer layer called exine made up of sporopollenin which is one of the most resistant organic material that can withstand high temperature, strong acid and alkali. No enzyme can degrade this. The inner layer that is intine which is made up of cellulose and pectin is a thin and continuous layer. The outer layer consists of germ pores which can allow the movement of the pollen tube. The cytoplasm of the pollen grain is surrounded by the plasma membrane. If the pollen grain matures, it contains two cells, vegetative cell and generative cell. But before the formation of cell, the important event that occurs is the division of nucleus of the pollen mitotically which generates two nuclei, vegetative nuclei and generative nuclei. Generally, pollen grains are spherical, measuring about 25 to 50 micrometers in diameter. There are some important facts about the pollen grains that some pollen grains can cause several allergies and bronchial distress that leads to chronic respiratory disorders such as asthma, bronchitis, etc. It can be mentioned that parthenium that is carrot grass it came to India as a contaminant with the imported varieties of wheat has become ubiquitous in occurrence and caused pollen allergy. Since pollen grains are rich in nutrients it has become a fashion in recent years to use pollen tablets as food supplement. In western countries a large number of pollen products are available in form of tablet and syrup. Pollen consumption has been claimed to increase the performance of the athletes and race horses. Pollen grains have to land on the stigma before they lose viability. The period for which pollen grain remain viable is highly variable and to some extent it depends on the temperature and humidity. In some cereals such as wheat and rice, the viability loses within 30 minutes. But in some members of family Rosaceae, Leguminaceae and Solanaceae, they maintain the viability for months. As for artificial insemination, the sperms of many animals and human are stored the same way pollen grains can also be stored of number of species for years in liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degrees Celsius. These storehouses are known as pollen banks similar to the seed banks and are used in crop breeding programs. In over 60% of angiosperms, pollen grains are shed at the two cell stage that is vegetative cell and generative cell. But in the remaining species, the generative cell divides mitotically and gives rise to two male gametes before the pollen grains are shed. 
this stage is known as pre-celled stage. We can observe bicellular pollen and tricellular pollen. The next topic is female reproductive part of the flower that is pistil, gynoecium. If the flower contain single pistil, it is monocarpillary. If it contains more than one pistil, it is multicarpillary because pistil is also known as carpal. If the carpels are more than one, they may be fused as in syncarpus or may be free as in apocarpus. Each pistil consists of three parts, stigma, style, ovary. Let us locate them in the flower. This is pistil, the female part of the flower. The upper portion is known as a stigma, which serves as the lending portion for the pollen grain. The middle one is a style, that is an elongated slender part that connects a stigma with the ovary. The last is basal portion, bulged portion, ovary, which is the center for the ovules. Ovule develops into embryo. The ovule is attached to the wall of the ovary through placenta. We have read about types of placentation in the previous standard. Let us familiarize ourselves with the structure of typical angiosperm ovule that is the megasporangium. Ovule is a small structure attached to the placenta by means of a stalk called as funicle. The body of the ovule fuses with funicle in the region called hilum. The hilum represents the junction between ovule and funicle. Each ovule has one or two protective envelopes known as integuments. Integuments encircle the mass of cells known as nucleus except at the tip where a small opening is present known as micropyle. Opposite the micropylar end is the chalaza representing the basal part of the ovule. Cells of new cellus have abundant reserve food materials and are located in the embryo sac that is female gametophyte. Let us see the embryo sac in more detail. But before that, let us see ovule and its parts. This is cross section of ovary. Let us see the development of ovule and embryo sac. In the flower, in the pistil, we can see the ovule present inside the ovary. It rises to female gametes that is egg cell. The longitudinal section of the ovule represents various structures such as one or two protective envelopes called integuments. The outer integument and the inner integument. We can also observe that at a place integument is absent. The portion is known as micropyle. The region is micropylar end. The stalk-like structure with which the ovule is attached to the placenta is known as funicle. The funicle moves ahead and the region where the ovule is attached is hilum. Enclosed within the integuments is a mass of cell that is known as nucellus. It stores abundant reserved of food materials. Let us first study megasporogenesis. It is the process of formation of megaspores from the megaspore mother cell. The cell of the new cellus undergoes meiotic division and forms four megaspores. Ovules generally differentiate a single megaspore mother cell in the micropylar region of the new cellus. It is a large cell containing dense cytoplasm and a prominent nucleus. It undergoes meiotic division and forms four haploid cells which are known as megaspores. Out of this, only one will give rise to female gametophyte, that is embryo sec. This kind of development is known as monosporic development. Formation of embryo sec involves single megaspore which divides mitotically to form two nuclei that moves to the opposite poles and two more sequential mitotic nuclear division that results into the following stages 2 nucleate, 4 nucleate and 8 nucleate. 
it is interesting to note that these mitotic division are strictly free nuclear that is no formation of cell wall after eight nucleate stage cell walls are laid down leading to the organization of typical embryo sac three cells are at chalazal end known as antipodals the large central cell has two polar nuclei and at the micropylar end three cells are grouped together to form egg apparatus only the central cell is diploid rest all the six cells are haploid at the micropylar end the group of three cells that is egg apparatus consists of two synergids that have special cellular thickenings at the micropylar tip called filiform apparatus which play important role in guiding the pollen tubes thus a typical angiospermic embryo sac at maturity though eight nucleate is a seven celled structure let us revise all the structures from the beginning that is from the ovary style stigma style connects stigma with the ovary the chambers of the ovary are known as locules each ovarian cavity is a locule which consists of megasporangium ovule that consists of integuments protective layers the opening end of the ovule is known as micropyle we can see the structures of the ovule in its cross section the sporocyte that will divide meiotically into four megaspores out of these four megaspores in monosporic development three will degenerate and only the functional megaspore develops into female gametophyte that is embryo sac which undergoes mitosis and forms eight nuclei these eight nuclei arrange inside the female gametophyte in a in three groups egg apparatus antipodals and central large cell with the polar nuclei in egg apparatus one cell is egg cell that is female gamete and the other two are synergids which serves to be the nutritious to it then at the center is a polar nuclei which is diploid in a structure it consists of the dense cytoplasm then at the chalazal end are the three antipodal cells a typical angiospermic embryo sac is hence eight nucleate but seven celled structure we can observe all the eight nucleus very well as well as the seven cells also i'm sure you have understood the cross section of the ovule as well as the ovary as well as the female reproductive part pistil in the upcoming lectures we will be studying the following topics pollination kinds of pollination agents of pollination outbreeding devices and many more so till then keep studying